David Payne, Director of the Opto Electronics Research Center at Southampton University. Hello, I'm uh, Emmanuel de Surville from uh, Thales Research uh, Laboratories. And I'm Brandy Giles. Uh, I work here at Bell Laboratories in Alcatel Lucent. In the 1970s and early 80s, we had developed optical fibers so pure that we could transmit light through one of these for a distance of up to 100 kilometers. But the thing that was missing was the ability to go beyond 100 kilometers with an optical amplifier. So the concept was we would take 100 kilometers of passive fiber and find an amplifier which would amplify in the optical domain, not electronic, and then go another 100 kilometers and on and on, indeed around the whole world. But how would that be done? Well, maybe I'd just say that there was an obvious need for some type of optical amplifier. There were some reports that were coming and work that was being done here at Bell Labs of people looking at different ingredients to add to fibers to try to get gain from them. So around the 1986-87 time frame, uh, the Southampton group in particular, as well as uh, here at Bell Labs with Emmanuel and others, myself joining shortly, that there is this work on, on looking at the erbium dope fiber amplifiers as a means of achieving gain. Since we make preforms and fibers here at Southampton University, it was relatively easy for us in the stage of making the preform from which we draw the fiber to add the magic ingredient erbium. The erbium, when it's placed into a host like a glass material, acts like a laser. And the laser is basically, as the acronym indicates, a light amplifier by stimulated emission of radiation. But if we forget the, the laser and think about the amplification principle, you have the, the uh, underlying uh, uh, principle that explains that an erbium doped glass can amplify light signals. We tried many other elements first, but the erbium had characteristic gain and absorption at 1.55 microns, which just so happens to be the low loss window for this optical fiber. That's where the loss is lowest that's where the entirety of the world's optical communication systems operate at 1.55 microns in the near infrared. So the basic concept is you have an optical fiber with the telecom signals that are fed into a piece of erbium dope fiber. It's a tiny uh, piece of glass which is very much uh, like uh, telecom fiber, apart from the design, and apart from the fact that the core is doped with uh, erbium. We energize the erbium atoms inside the core of that short length of erbium doped fiber. The signals, when passing through, are going to pick up this energy by the effect called stimulated emission of radiation. The first fiber laser was actually generated by Eli Snitzer and his co-workers in the 60s. But of course, his work, he used a flash lamp, he wrapped a fiber around a flash lamp, preceded the telecommunications fiber, the, which gave us this wonderful low loss medium. And so it stopped at that point, and it had to wait for another 
nearly 30 years when we picked it up again and said, aha, we've got different glasses, we've got practical lasers, we've got this wonderful silica fiber medium, and we can end pump this, whereas he was using a flash lamp from the outside. But the, the bad side of the story is that to achieve that, you needed to have very impractical laser, what's called pumping uh, lasers, B big gas laser with a like two meter length, uh, kilo, uh, kilo volts, and uh, water cooled, noisy, uh, heavy, anything but a practical uh, device. So a physicist would say, uh, well, this is beautiful, but that's, that's nice physics, very good, but that's completely impractical. And this worked for Southampton University and Bell Labs as well, because we both used impractical big lasers to uh, make it to work. I came in you know, a month or two later to start looking at, well, what can we do with this and really create the optical amplifier of the type that can be used in, in communication systems. So we could immediately put into play all the tools and resources to see what this implied in telecommunications. The fact that you could amplify real data and with high quality, high fidelity, was something that everybody was anxiously awaiting to see if that could be done or not. To achieve the, the practical side, we had to look at the atomic spectroscopy look at the absorption bands of the erbium, where you could excite those atoms with the right laser wavelength, from which a wavelength that you could obtain from very miniature semiconductor chips, so-called laser diodes. It was important to get the diode lasers, the very tiny lasers, to be uh, of the right wavelength and power so that we could make compact optical amplifiers. They were very difficult to get. Um, we had some internal capability. We were also highly desirous of getting other components from Japan, suppliers there who are making high power diodes for other purposes. Yeah. I took a letter from the president of Bell Labs to make the request to that particular firm if they could kindly provide us some samples for our research activities. And it worked. And we got those samples and were able to really go down the road of showing these very compact amplifiers that got a lot of people excited, not just in research, but in our development and business organizations too. Well, the urban doped amplifier is fairly ubiquitous today. If you, if you show me a fiber optic cable in the ground or above the air, I'll follow that and quickly find an urban amplifier. Every 40 kilometers or so that you go along a very long length of optical fiber, you're going to stop and find an urban amplifier there, which is used for the amplification. And if you look at a map of the world today and look at the, ocean, the oceanic cables, it looks like a spider's web crossing the world. Although you could, and indeed the very first undersea links, did use electrical amplifiers, the compromise they had to make on the bandwidth was enormous. So taking out those electrical amplifiers and putting in the erbium doped fiber amplifier meant this huge increase in the bandwidth that you could transmit the information carrying capacity, if you prefer, of that fiber network. Mm -hmm.